Hello, this is Ken. It's fall and time to start a new project. I have ordered the Virginia American Schooner. I'm looking forward to my next model boat. This one has a mast and some sails and some rigging, so this will be a new challenge. And uh, let's take a look and see what I got. And some stuff. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Same kind of thing. A box full of flat parts. So I'm not big on those box openings. I'd like to spend most of this video on assembling the boat. Might take me a while. I think this one's more complicated. So uh, here's the wood. Here's the sails. I read online some of these the paper flag. I think it might be better if I was to purchase a regular cloth flag. I wonder what the uh, instructions look like. I guess in the video we'll find out because. Most of this video is going to be spent on building the thing rather than looking at the instructions. Oh, yeah, here they are. Okay, let's get started. I've unpacked the box here as you can see, laid out everything. I've uh, read the instructions several times. I've looked online at the YouTubes and the blogs and uh, it seems like uh, there's not as much information out here for the Virginia Sloop as there are for other boats. So that'll make it a bit of a challenge. But at the same time, that'll make it fun as I have to figure out for myself some things that aren't so clear. So I started assembling per instructions, dry fitted all these parts, and all it's going well. Got this real nice keel clamp, I like it. And I uh, came to my first conundrum where you take item number 10 and you uh, slip it on the back here. There's a name for it, I don't know what it is. And then you, uh, you bevel that off so it's flat, and I've done that off the boat. And sure enough, it seems to be meet with the false deck. And then you take number 10, or number 11, and you put it to number 10. And the instructions weren't clear. They had a picture, and they sort of alluded to it. And, but there were other guys online doing it different. And you look at the instructions, they aren't so clear, and there was no words. You either put it flat, or you raise it up, and you bevel off number 11 as well. And it makes a difference as to the rears, whether it's flat or you raise it up. And neither one of them choices, those choices, conflict with putting the deck on. You, you put it like this. Come on. There we go. And you put it level. And it kind of... Oh, it goes flat, but it bevels off to the back here. So it doesn't conflict with the deck and it rides a little lower or you could raise it up and bevel it so it meets with the deck but it raises a little higher. So there's two choices and I couldn't figure out which to do and I've been at it for a couple hours. Uh, so I looked online and I read all the instructions and uh, I'm tempted to shave it off but I'm, it's not clear to me this is the right thing to do. So then I uh, figured well the difference would be sometime in uh, future build where the elevation of this rear part makes a difference. So I took a look and sure enough there was this part here that used part of the false keel lately that meets with the back. And so I um, attached this, clamped it to the rear and close to an elevated position. So you can take this and bevel it off. I think that's the solution I liked but I'm trying to double check. And you lay this there like that. Hope you can see it. And you lay this false keel on, and sure enough, it looks like there's room for it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, glue it first and bevel it, or bevel it and glue it first. I think I'm going to bevel it first. And uh, then you take a round file and you um, shave the back of this off. Oh, isn't that interesting? I haven't made my mind up yet, which I like. But yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, let's see how it goes in the future, if that was the right choice or not. I beveled part 11, glued it to part 10, glued it to the frame, and there it is, nice and level. 
These are the clips I use, paper clips, to square up the frames. Then I took the deck and laid it on the keel and marked where the frames met. Put it down and drew a line from the bow to the stern and then drew these lines in the intersections to where they meet. This represents what's happening underneath the deck. So I re-squared up the frames, having done all this work, in preparation to put the deck back on. And then I laid the deck on. I used this rubber band here to lash the deck at the stern. And you can see that vise is holding this rear of my keel clamp up. And get it all aligned and you press down and I'm getting ready to drill some pilot holes. Still just dry fitting. Let's drill a hole and see how it looks. Looks kind of good. I put a pin in the hole to see so you can see here where it is and then I moved the deck aside and looked underneath and the hole was right on the keel. I think I got a process figured out. There's the pin right on the keel. It took me four or five times to do this. It wasn't so simple as being shown here. I had to erase and redraw. The lines weren't quite right. It has to be fairly accurate as best I can tell. But I think I have a process figured out. So now I'm going to drill one or two holes and try it again. And if it's good, I'm going to nail the deck down. I finally got the deck installed. I took a week off to get my other chores done and came back and started studying. Next thing you know, I've got a whole bunch of stuff installed here. So let's go over what's been done up to now. When I was installing the deck, I drilled holes. Some were deeper than others, and when I put the nails in, it turns out when you hit the bottom of the hole, it was very difficult to push the nail into this very dense frame. I had bought a nailer on Amazon, and I was not quite happy with it. It's bent, and when you push the nail in and it retracts, it doesn't spring back, and it put a lot of force on there, and I wasn't happy with it. So I used pliers to install the nails. And then in order to get it flush, since the nailer wasn't working, I used a nail punch from my other woodwork, and that seemed to work quite well. But it may not work when I'm installing the planks on the side of the boat, so I'm not sure I have my process straight. I will, I will study that some more. But having got the nails in and the deck flush, I then glued it with both instant glue to get her down, and then I put carpenter glue on top of that and let it dry. And then I installed the night heads here, uh, the front and the second frame here. And then the instructions say to fair. And in order, after I got what I thought was fairing, I took one a, a plank from a previous ship and uh, started working with this new plank bender. And I'm not used to it, and uh, so I bent the plank, and as you can see here, and I uh, bent the plank, one, two, three, <laughs> I broke several of them. It was uh, not quite straight. So then I did it again with a little less force. And as a result, they aren't quite so deep and it doesn't bend so well. So maybe I need to wet the wood or straighten out the cutting edge. It's not quite clear to me what's going on. But it got bent enough that I laid the plank on and saw to it that the fairing was, was pretty good. I was happy with all the fairing. All except this top night head here. It isn't quite low enough, and I'm not sure how low it should go. So when I get to that point, I'll have to revisit that. But the rest of the fairing is good. And the other issue I have here is in the stern. This hasn't been uh, sanded at all. So when the plank comes around, it's not going to have much of an attach point. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to smooth that out. But before I do that, because once you cut it, you can't uncut it. So I'll uh, let that stand for the moment, and I'll get back to it. So I think the fairing is adequate for now. So then I started installing the decking. And the instructions in the manual say to use these long planks. And these are quite thin. Mine are 0.4 millimeters, thinner than what they said in the book. And the instructions are to lay them down and glue them. And then use pencil marks and mark where they were supposed to be cut and mark where the nail holes are. And so I experimented with that. 
and I wasn't happy with the result. And I saw online that many of the other master craftsmen were taking their more advanced ships, which is what I wish to do. I wish to build more advanced ones, so I use this as a practice. And I took that thin piece and I cut them into lengths. And then I colored the side of them with this pencil, colored them in one by one. I haven't figured out how to do these thin ones in mass yet. And, uh, and then I glued them down. In order to come to this arrangement, I did some experiments. So, I don't know if you can see here or not, but I took a thicker piece from a previous boat and just glued it on and then marked it with pencil. And that's where I became not so enamored with that pencil marks. So then I glued down the thin piece with no pencil marks with a cut to follow that shorter plank and you can't even see the cut, so that wasn't good. And I also marked them with a pencil, reconfirming that just the straight pencil pencil marks indicating a cut just didn't work for me. So then here's where I came to my conclusion that I like. I uh, colored in the piece of wood, glued it down, glued another one beside it, put in these uh, simulated nail holes, and uh, that's what I've come to like. I colored the side of the planks, glued them down. A little later on I will put pencil marks simulating the nail holes, and I think that's what I'm going to do next. Finish the decking. Now that the deck is finished and trimmed on the side, I'm going to go out and buy some 8mm drill bits and finish this hole right here so we're ready to go. So then I install this plank just below the deck for the instructions. 5 millimeters. so I marked it and you can see I've done that. I still like the idea of drilling the holes first and then pounding these nails in. That's what I've been doing. And I can see now how this is going to mate back here. And they seem to, the planks seem to sort of collide here. I got to be careful. I think I'll cut these off just right. I don't want them to be too short. And then I'll finish putting nails in on the rest of these. Sticking out a little bit so I can clip them. I found I got some nice clippers and we'll clip them off. And I'll come down and I think I'll put two planks in. And then I'll start the bottom and work my way up. And that's the status of where we are now. Okay, I'm on to the second plank. Here's the process I'm using. I'm uh, taking this new plank bender I have, and I'm putting some crimps in there, or cuts. And on YouTube, these uh, experts put these cuts on there, and the planks bend just very nice. And you figure out how many cuts you want, and you get the bend, and it really looks good. I'm struggling a little bit with the technique. Either my cuts are too shallow and I'm not getting a bend, or I put too much force in there, they break through and I, I damage the piece of wood. And I have some spares. I will get the technique down. But for the moment, I'm putting those uh, lighter cuts in there and I'm soaking the wood for 30 minutes in hot water. Then I lay it on to the, onto the frame here. Use these paper clips as clamps. Clamp them down and in place and hold it there and when the wood dries it retains mostly the bend. Then I take the clamps off, see how they fit, shave and adjust and cut what needs to be done and then um, I'm planning to put glue on there and get them in place and then use these nails and pound them in. I'm no longer drilling holes, I bought a new hammer, a little tiny four ounce one, looks really good. Pounds in there very nice, and that's my new process.
I finished my planking. That is just a difficult chore. I beveled the wood, laid it on as you saw, and there still was some ridges involved, so I sanded them down. It came out actually very nice. I had to go and uh, use a variety of uh, grits and get them down. There were still some gaps in there that weren't quite smooth, so I used some putty, filled them out, smoothed it out, sanded it down, and I'm, I'm quite happy with the way it's going. I think I'm going to be able to plank this very smooth on both sides. I've been at it a couple times, and then I got this railing on. I got contact cement all over my fingers, stuck to the wood. I ripped it off and ripped a piece of wood off, stuck in my finger. But uh, I've got to work on how to not stick my fingers to the boat. But I got that all on. That seems to be pretty good. Got it all sanded down. I trimmed the stern here with a variety of tools, a Dremel, a saw, some X-Acto blades, and it looks like that's going to work. I practice with my um, stern piece here, and it looks like it fits real good. I still have to work on the bow here. It's, uh, I'll saw it off and get ready for this uh, bow piece, like this. And I have my last little uh, stern thing to put on. I don't know what you call that. I'll put it on, and with those last few touches, I'm going to start studying carefully how to lay this mahogany. And I think I'll use carpenter's glue for that. I started laying the mahogany on the hull and the ramen up here on the bulk works. And it seems to be going pretty smooth. I found that the softwood will curve around and glue right on to the bow part. But the stern part here has a tendency to curve up a little bit. And when you lay the, the mahogany strips down, they bow out a little bit, causing a little bit of a gap. So I've used the instant contact cement, trying to hold it down till it glues tight and doesn't come up anymore. And it looks okay. But possibly I've seen online where people are using these wedges that uh, allow you to put the wood straight and then you lay a wedge in. And that's how they get it to be nice and smooth. And I'll have to look into doing that. Maybe I can lay them straight here or I'll have to use wedges at the end. I don't know. But at the top is where I started, and we can use these rubbing strakes, and that might cover up my initial work. So I think it'll work out just fine. I'll finish that now. I'm almost done planking the mahogany. I've uh, not been successful with these long strips because of the bowing, so I tried the, uh, the idea of cutting sm shorter strips and laying them down, and then beveling them and laying the next strip down, and that seems to work pretty good. Some cases it looks kind of funky because it turns up a little bit. I suppose that's okay. I've uh, tried notching the wood and that didn't work, so that will hide underneath the, the rubbing strakes. And uh, it's been pretty successful. I've tried several aspects. I'm not sure I know which is the right way to do it. Maybe as each curve and each kind of wood thickness and so forth, each way is different. This is my second planking of the boat, so I've learned some. looks pretty good. And I'm now trying the wedge affair where you lay one long strip and let it go flat, nice and neat, and it leaves a wedge, so you put a wedge in here. I think I'm going to try that. That looks successful. I really wasn't excited about the wedge, but as I work my way down from the top down and from the bottom up, I see I'm going to have a wedge anyway, like I've done here. So I think this might be the successful way to do it. The next step was to glue the stringers in, and I've done that. I take these uh, stiff pieces of wood, and I've uh, soaked them in warm water one at a time for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and then laid them down while they were wet. Used these little clips and clamped them, curved them up against the wood, and clamped them and got them to get this bend in. I let them dry, and they, they dried in the form of this bend. And then I, I had them cut the size to start with a little longer. Then once they were bent, I trimmed the end. And it uh, was a little tricky on how to do this uh, bow business here. So I made sure there was room 
for the spar that goes in there. So I, uh, I cut them fairly close, cut the, open this up a little bit, and there we are, I've done them both. The next step is to put these little stringer posts in there, and uh, I cut them, it says to cut them 17 inches for the, 17 millimeters for the back, and I've done that. There they are. They seem kind of tall. Uh, maybe not so tall here, but uh, fairly tall there. These 14 millimeters also seem kind of tall for here. What you'll do is, uh, planning to do for the instructions, is find my railings, lay these on there, and uh, lay the railings flat. Um, and as I thought about the height of these and these alleged or these pre prescribed lengths, I found out that this drawing here is a one-to-one -one drawing. Let me zoom out so you can see it. It came with this uh, drawing that was one-to-one, -one, which is very useful. And I started looking at the, the railing here. And uh, should have had this open. It's a little tricky how this works. These, these railings overlap. And there's some shorter pieces and longer pieces. And the uh, railing to the back, the little posts are shorter at the back and taller at the front because the boat curves up, but the railing stays fairly flat. And you can see that better in this part here at the end where the railing is fairly flat and the, the stern curves up a little bit. So these posts have to change their length. So I'll, that's the little tricky part. Nothing can't be done. You take these uh, smaller pieces. I'm going to forget which size it is at the moment. And you mark the every 11 millimeters, you put them on at, at the length they, they said. And then you sand them down, file them down to keep the railing flat. And I'm wondering if I glue them on and then start filing, well, this is a fairly hard wood. Will it come undone? Maybe I should file them first. Well, so I'll probably follow instructions. But that's the tricky part. Now is to lay these on, my next step. So now I'm starting the process of laying down the stringers. I marked on the gunnel here every 11 millimeters where we're going to put a stringer on both sides. Saw that they are fairly parallel to one another. And I took this little 3x3 uh, three three piece of wood and cut it to what I think is the right length for the forward part of 11 millimeters. And I lay it on there and it depends where you put it here because up front it seems kind of tall and towards the back it seems just right. And as you go along there's a little bit of variation in there and so it's a kind of interesting thing. I glued four of them down temporarily, just a little bit of glue. That I think I can break them off. And I then laid the railing on top and I took a look and it seems to me that this railing is a little tall up front. I'm not sure I like that. I took a look at this picture they sent us. It's to be a one-to-one uh, -one picture, and I measured them with my calipers, and it seems like it's seven millimeters above the gunnel here, all the way for the forward part, until we get this little step. So if that's seven millimeters, I kind of figured and calculated uh, an 11 millimeter piece of wood gives me that kind of very, kind of business. But it does seem kind of high. So I got a I got a level and put it on the base here and got the boat level and took a look and sure enough it does seem a little high, not by much. A little bit different than the picture on this boat here. But I might lower this down a little bit and uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't want to glue them all in real hard and then find out I don't like it and then they won't be easy to break off. So I'm working through the process of how I see that on the picture they're not quite so tall. Here it shows I think six millimeters there. These little double ones are three, and these are nine or, nine or something like that. That's my process, and I'm in the process of doing this. And that's just my guess for it. Who knows, once I build it, what actually will take place.
things are going pretty good. I got the stringers on and the railings that look pretty good. I've got all my planking done. I got the rubbing strakes on. Things are going pretty smooth. And then I come to put the the rudder on and I've come into a little problem here. It isn't quite as I expected and I'm not sure what I've done wrong, but uh, I think I have a solution to fix it. I don't know if you can see here, but I've uh, penciled in where I'm going to cut the rudder to match the drawing. And I lay it up against the keel here and uh, I've got a little bit of a gap in there. I think that's okay. I can live with that. But what I found is when you go to attach the rudder, it doesn't go all the way up. I don't understand. I followed all the instructions. Everything looks pretty good per the picture. Uh, I don't know what to do. If I uh, put the rudder up to where it belongs, it doesn't meet the bottom. And I'm at a loss. So probably it'll dawn on me some night what I've done wrong. But in the interim, I grabbed a scrap piece of wood I cut the end or trimmed the end, practicing to put the uh, putting the rudder on. And I think what I'm going to do is when I mount this like this, I'm going to take this thin piece, I'm going to glue it on the back here, bring this down, and arrange it such that when it sits, it'll all fit. So before I get carried away and, and do all this attaching and gluing and fitting, first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut these notches, and I find my pencil marks on this side don't quite match the pencil marks on that side so I gotta figure out when I turn my template over how to do that and then I'm gonna notch these out and when I like the rudder and it looks like it's gonna work then I'll, uh, I'll deal with the stern post up ahead and I think I'm gonna use this Dremel and do a little cutting first thing I'll do is practice on some other wood and see how I can uh, divot these so that they match the drawing Now these little brass gadgets were have to be pinched together for a nail to fit in there, and so I pinched them together, kind of scratched them up with my pliers. There must be a better way to bend them. It took me a while to get the right configuration, and I had to get the right angle. And I measured them both. I'm about to put this one in. Oops, I dropped it. And um, I bent them up on this one too, so that the nails just fit. Tiny things. Just barely fit in there. Nice tight hinge. And they just fit in here. So in theory, there'll be a hinge. And um, looks like that fits in there pretty good. I like it. So the first one's in. Now I'll put the second one in, nail it on, and if they fit, then I'll attach these, clip these off here on the end, and it'll all be good. And then I need to extend it up a little bit, and I'll be done. Next I'm working on the deck fittings, and the first one is the companion, which is basically a, a door and a hatchway to go down into the interior of the boat. And uh, per the instructions, I assembled the four sides, but it came time to put this wood on, which was flat. It's supposed to be curved. And I struggled with three or four different ways to get it, and the last one that came up seemed to be successful. I got a coffee cup of the same radius, and I soaked the little flat piece of wood, the roof, in water for a couple hours, then laid it up against this coffee cup underneath these straps. I wrapped it better. And then I uh, tightened them with this tourniquet affair. And as they tightened, the wood curved around the cup and I let it dry for a couple hours, or actually a, a half a day. And then when I pulled it off, it still was a little wet, wasn't quite right, but I bent it with some clamps and finished the final assembly and glued it on and then clamped it and let it sit for the rest of the day. And that seemed to work. So next we're going to lay some uh, little strips on the top and I'll follow the process.
I'm working my way across the deck equipment trying to get it all finished. As you can see, I got the cargo hatch done. We'll put that up on the boat. And I finished the bow sprint masthead. I had to paint it all of a sudden and this aluminum didn't seem to be adequate. And uh, so I stopped all the work I was doing and painted a few things. I just finished these. They're still wet. Why I had the paintbrush out, I got them done with my brass and my brown paint. And I uh, finished my anchors. I painted, spray painted them black. And I sealed them and then I uh, painted black on one side. And I'll get around to doing the black here next time I'm out with my paint. And I'm starting to work on my carronade. It's uh, a little tricky. Let's put this up here. I don't want to assemble things and then try to work on them, so I got to figure out the sequence of events. I decided to put uh, these little eye bolts on why it still has openings, why I'm still open and not assembled. And they're a little tricky. They're about 0.7 millimeters, and that's pretty small. And I got a set of drills. And I decided 0.8 works best for me, and I put them on a power drill. My hand drill was just, just too wobbly and wasn't working for me. And the power drill's a bit beefy and kind of powers into it. You have to be careful. So I drilled some holes. These are actually longer than the wood will allow. The wood's not much bigger in some cases, 0.7 millimeters. So I drilled part way down and then clipped the eye bolt on and then glued it in place. In some cases, I broke the drill off inside twice. So I had to kind of drill around it and on at an angle and get it in. So I got those all in and I glued this on the ring. Some pictures the ring is brass and some pictures the ring is brown. I chose to go with brown like a piece of wood. And uh, put these together, my carronade and the aiming device. And now I am struggling a little bit with the stacking thread. I go, what's stacking thread? There's very few pictures or close-up pictures. Parents out it's just this wire. So the best I can tell is you feed the wire through these blocks and then you use that wire to tie the blocks off on one side and then you run the thread through the blocks and they go off to do their steering arrangement. But I haven't done that yet, so I'll have to dry lad that and see if I can figure out what's going on. Then when I get this all put together, uh, oh, this doesn't quite fit. Oh, I have to sand it down or something. I put urethane on this nice mahogany. I might have to sand it and then re-urethane it. I don't know. But anyway, I'll, uh, you have to drill some holes in the deck and put a few more eye bolts and then with the blocks and tackle you get an arrangement to steer. So I'll have to do that. And I'm still working my way through trying to figure out what's going on, but I think the next pictures will show it all assembled on the deck. I'm getting kind of excited. I've assembled all the major deck equipment. I've laid it here on the deck. The next step will be to glue it down. I'll have to figure out the sequence. I have a few eye bolts to drill and glue in, some lines to tie, but uh, that's the final steps. Then I'll start on rigging the mass. I've never done that before. That'll be a little tricky, but that's nothing we can't do. Let's start rigging the mast. That's the next step. I've been studying the books and looking around on the web and so forth, and I see that they recommend you don't do the masts, assemble the masts on the boat, because when you put them in and you start working on them, it's a chance for you to, to ruin something that you spent many hours on doing. So let's set the boat aside. And I saw a good idea online, use a two by four or something like that and put it on there and rig everything up and then when we're all done, we'll set them onto the boat. That's the plan. I've never done this, so we'll see if that works. Then, when you take a look at these dowels they gave us in the kit, you can see they have to be shaped, different lengths, different thicknesses, tapered and so forth to represent the, the spars and booms and mass on, the, on a real ship. I was talking to some of my friends and was suggesting that maybe I... Um, Here's my sandpaper. Maybe I could hold the sandpaper and spin it, or use my Dremel, or put a sanding wheel on a drill and sand it. Those all probably is what I was going to do, but a friend of mine has a lathe. This is why don't you use my lathe? And it's good to have friends, good to have people who love you and help you out. And I thought, well, I'll take them up on that. So I went to his house, and he looked at the drawings and said he's never worked with something so small as this and he couldn't get his lathe to, 
to clamp on to the bit here, but he rigged something up and he turned them for me. And as you can see, I kind of got the leftovers and so I marked them on the drawing and the ends have to be cut off and I have to do a little bit more sanding here. And then I think we're ready to start the assembly. I'm finding even with the lathe there's some fine adjustment that needs to be made. So my drill is working quite well. As I was finishing my boom, I had the end taken care of. And I was working on this end and I pushed too hard and I broke it. Bummer. I didn't have a spare piece of wood. So I went to the local hardware store and I didn't have it so I called around and found Rockler and they had this 3 8 inch dowel and it's a quite a bit larger as you can see. So I bought it and I cut a piece to the right length and I have it on my drill here and this time I was very careful especially when I got to the end and I thinned it, I cut the piece and then I thinned it out here while it was still thick and as I worked my way back I made it to the proportions that I wanted and I drew it out carefully on this piece of paper here. I don't know if you can see it or not. And I worked my way back so it was nice and thick at the drill and I took my calipers and I sanded and sanded and got down here at the end and got kind of tricky but I was really careful and you can see there's the dowel left over and I brought it on down thin and then I thinned it and thinned it with my variety of tools and then I sawed it right off and here whoops here is my new boom uh, the end's not quite as good but you know what I'm not going to go much careful and get more particular about it and then I, uh, I thinned the end here. I sawed it flat. I think that's what I need to do. S sanded it flat. And that now slips in. And this becomes my boom. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me take my main mast off. And that becomes the boom. Oh, no, it doesn't fit. Well, I'll make arrangements. I have all my spars shaped. They've all been covered with urethane. I'm able to put the gaff cheeks on those gaffs, able to put the upper main on the main mast with these little, uh, whatever they're called. And now I'm in the process of putting on the blocks. I saw online a real nice YouTube on how to put these wire blocks on. You figure out where they are and you put a little piece of tape and then you put the wire on and I'm going to cover all of my um, all of my spars with the appropriate blocks as they're shown here. And when they're all set, I'm thinking that's the time to start assembling the masts and spars on the boat. So I, I looked all over YouTube to see how to attach these sails, and I just couldn't quite figure it out. So I put this little thread through the bolt rope, between the bolt rope and the sail, wrapped it around my gaff, let it through again, And then bring it under and tie a simple overhand knot. There we go. And then put a touch of CA glue just on the, um, the brown one here. Don't want to get it on the bolt rope in case I have to take it off.
as you can see, I finished all the sails on the main mast. I brought all the lines down to the deck and I'm ready to coil them up and put them in permanent. Uh, the mast has not been glued in, so I'm going to glue it in, which then makes this a permanent affair. I've learned over time to use your CA glue lightly. I think I've changed every sail and every block on this mast more than once. It's taken a while. I put all the single blocks up here, and then as I started to lead the lines, I realized I needed a single, a double, and a triple. And uh, the instructions just aren't clear, as you can see. Some of the pictures don't even show some of the blocks that are needed until you find another shot at a, some odd angle that shows, oh, there's another block there. So I've kind of been through that iteration learning how to do this. That's what this is, is a good learning exercise. And uh, i got a few things more to do, then I'll coil it down, glue it on, and I'm done with the mainsail, the main mast. Well, I'm excited I'm getting near the end of the boat. I'll be glad to get this done. Uh, the next step is to get these dead eyes installed, and uh, I've totally underestimated how difficult this is going to be. It's probably not too hard for somebody practice, but as a first-time process, this is tough. So I've uh, done my first couple. I've uh, run out of this little wire, so I went to Joann's and bought some a new one, and it's a little bit softer and larger, but it seems to work. So I take this found an old resistor I had, half watt. Wrap this around my nail and spin it. And I assume they all got to be the same length, wouldn't it look nice? So I put it up there and I got to go a little more. Now I have three, and I'm going to pin them to the side with this nail. So now I think I have the first three here. So I'm going to mount one piece of wood and mount these three as a trial run. And uh, then... I'll work on reaving these lines in, and I don't know how I'm going to attach it to the top of my masts. Those look awful busy up there. I'll have to uh, see how that works. Many of these dead eyes have their little holes plugged, as you can see here. And as I was uh, drilling them out by hand, carefully, it broke in half. This is the second one that broke in half. I guess I'll have to glue it back together. But um, they didn't include any spare dead eyes. I mean, these things can't be too expensive. They couldn't have put in a few extras. So I looked online and found some other dead eyes. I'll have to maybe delay my build for a couple days. But these are oak of a different nature, a different color. Maybe I can do one side in these, um, I don't know what this white wood is, cheap for sure. Maybe I can learn how to make them. But that'll delay me even more. What a pain. It took me a while, but I finally got all 12 of the dead eyes installed. Those really were frail little dead eyes. I had to go buy a box of some. There were some round ones and some triangular ones. I just had a hard time finding five millimeters. And I studied a lot of YouTube videos on how to coil line. I tried coiling it myself and it just looked all floppy and then I found some good ones and proceeded to tie all the lines down on the deck. Well that completes my build process. I sure enjoyed building this boat. It was a lot of fun. There were a lot of things I'd never done before like masts, sails, rigging. And I had to study a lot of YouTube videos out there to understand what needed to be done. I appreciate all you guys who made those. It sure made my life easier and made my product much better. Thank you. 
and I hope you guys enjoy this video. And so with that, I'll let you look at the pictures of the boat.